I'm um, there we go. So yeah, I'm in the, the regional director in Scotland for Firestarter Business Solutions. We are a company based in Cheltenham, um, but actively involved in the local Chamber of Commerce with Dumbarton Chamber of Commerce. We've partnered with Damon on several things in the years we've been members of the chamber. And I think we've done some of this each year for the last few years. So it, it's good to be invited back. It's a good sign um, to come and do some uh, presentation on about how you ignite your business planning. So we have our MD, Chris O'Riordan uh, with us, who um, is going to present um, his thoughts on this, on, on planning and, and how you can implement that effectively in your business and I suppose it relates to your personal life as well principles apply there too so great to be here um Damon anything you need want to add just before we kick off uh, and pass the time to Chris give you an opportunity to say hello as well Damon uh no uh, that's fine just uh good thanks very much for supporting uh this and uh, uh which I always find these uh, sessions valuable my, myself and uh, really rate uh, everything that Firestarter do. I uh, would highly recommend engaging with, with them uh, or at the very least taking these uh, nuggets forward uh, with, with, you, with your business. Okay, thanks, Jim. Yeah, thanks, Damon. Appreciate that. Chris, over to you to share our pearls of wisdom. Brilliant. Well, well good morning, everybody, and thanks so much for having us. Um, so we've got about an hour planned for this so um uh, but we'll just go with the flow really we've got quite a, a a small group um so uh we can we can keep it kind of relatively agile and free flowing as we as we go along um so exactly um as as john sort of just um explained um we're we're from firestarter firestarter is a business which fundamentally works with all kinds of organizations, big and small, um, supporting them with improving sales performance, executing growth, getting the shape of their business working properly for them. Um, my name's Chris O'Reard and I'm sort of founder and the the, the business leader of, of Firestarter. Uh, John, as you know, is our uh, local man in Scotland. Um, and we've also got um, Jordan and Daniela um, from our team are here today as well. Um, so um, the, the, the basic plan for this session, uh, and my multitasking skills are terrible, um, so by all means do put stuff in the chat, and, and John, if you perhaps shout at me periodically, um, that would be, be useful, I'll, I'll, um, I'll, I'll try and keep an eye on it. Um, uh, but also we've got, we've got time for questions at the end, and uh, by all means, um, because of the size of the group, if, if, you have a, if you have a burning question at any given point, please do just um, shout up. Um, so, plan is on as, as per here, really, a uh, quick introduction, which we're just working our way through now. Um, a lot of this content um, that we're going to share here comes from um, our sort of core work around business planning that we do in all kinds of guises with organisations. Um, so, we do everything from like really quite significant long-term partnerships with businesses to, to sessions like this, which are just kind of small tasters. Uh, and, and everything in between. So um, I'll just give a little bit of context to that. Um, I don't know whether any of you joined a session we did two or three weeks ago, right at the beginning of the year, which had had a, had as its theme um, just getting yourself straight for the new year. So so if you did, there'll be just a little bit of repeat. If you didn't, it will help set context. Um, and then the two main things we're going to talk about today are how to um, think about using different planning horizons to, to make things um, happen. And then it's just generally some, some tips for getting stuff done um, amongst what I think we all experience, just the busyness of, of, of business life and, and I guess all life. Um, so, so that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, as, as I say, there's the, there, there should be a good chunk of time at the end for a bit of uh, discussion, but if, as we go along the way, you want to um, chip in by all means um, uh, throw something at me and I'll, I'll, I'll try and I'll try and notice um, so as I said just some kind of background principles just to um, to get us going um, when when we did the session a few weeks ago we we shared some of our our I guess some of our, our most common material around um, some principles around 
ripping your strategy. And a lot of the fast starter work that we do in this type of area is all about simplifying um, simplifying what are challenging processes for people. If you can hear a dog, um, excuse me, I'm in somebody else's office and they've got a dog next door, just brightening up the uh, brightening up the event. Um, the um, so yes, yeah, simplifying what are often quite complicated processes. And and we we, we talk about two or three um, really nice steps that you can go through in order to make that happen. Um, the first one of which is just a really simple um, strategic intent exercise. Um, and I always say when we share these slides that I'm more than happy to share the templates that we've got for these. But in reality, this is just a word document that you type on. So I don't think you really need the template. It's the principles that are the important thing. And the idea of, of, of this strategic intent um, concept is to, to simplify um, the articulation of what you're really trying to do with your business um, and to try and do it over a reasonable a reasonably sensible time frame. So, um, if I if I give a bit of detail on that, the first point is that um, we use the term strategic intent because we're we're not trying to um, kind of pin people down to visions, what we're trying and, and missions and all those kind of things. What we're trying to do is just get people to say what they think they're trying to achieve. Um, so, uh, and then we use a three year window because commonly people often default to, 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 to five-year business plans, which are, it's it's a long time, five years, whereas three years is, is, is a good period because it's it's far enough away for you to be able to actually material materially do something, um, um, but it's near enough for it to feel like it's something that you can connect with. So so what we suggest to people to do is to, to do this exercise in two parts. The, the three-year part is you, you just... And I always say this is the kind of exercise you probably can do whilst you're having a cup of tea or a cup of coffee. It's not a long exercise. And just pick these five topics, financial, product, team, processes and leadership. And just in a few words, and again, the kind of rule is if you're going over more than one page or you're using a size six font, you're writing too much. Yeah. So just for these five areas, just say what do I want to achieve for each one of those in three years time? In three years time, what do I want each one of those to look like? And I've got a bit of supporting commentary in a moment that I'll, I'll, I'll just give you around that. And then what you do is you say, well, if, if I'm going to do that in three years time, what do I need to have achieved in one year? And so you directly relate um, the, the three year intent to, to what you need to do in the, in the next year. So it's a really simple exercise, but it's a really powerful exercise. And, um, Clearly, this links a little bit to the, the planning horizons conversation we're going to have in a moment. Um, we'll, we'll be sending you these slides. So um, uh, obviously, this isn't a memory test, but um, I'm sure people will will screen grab as well if if if, if they find it useful. But the, these kind of tips to, to help you ask what your intent is for each one of those five areas um, are really useful. So financial is kind of what what are your financial aspirations for your business in three years time how much do you want to be turning over or how much money do you want to have in the bank or what shape do you want your business to have if you're for example if you're trying to sell it product what do you actually want to be selling in three years time so look at what you're selling now and challenge yourself is that is that what you want to be selling in three years time and who do you want to be selling it to Team, who do you who do you want to be in your business? What people do you need in your business in order to service that product set and those financial goals um, that 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 you you're, you're aspiring to? Processes, what processes, systems, quality controls do you, you 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 see that you need in your business that you don't have now? And then leadership, often a really interesting question uh, in SMEs because um, asking yourself. Um, who, who, what, who should be running your business in three years' time? Is it you? Is it somebody else? What, what do you want your role in your in your business to be in three years' time? Um, so that's the strategic intent exercise, um, which I, I, I've raced through because uh, we, we we've covered this a few times. But I think it's always really excellent um, context, and that um, that explodes into a an extended exercise, um, which we encourage people to do. Um, on a which we call a strategy on a page, which is um, a simple template, and you, you'll see as we go through um, all of this um, work today that we're, we're we're talking about simple templates. This strategy on a page template just 
that probably takes strategic intent to one layer down um, and asks you to, um, and I don't know whether you can see it um, depending on how big your screen is, but I will um, stick my pointer on and try and point and it asks you to pick some key strategic pillars in your business, some of which we've talked about. So what do you think your financial strategy? What should your product strategy be? What should your marketing strategy be? What's your sales strategy, et cetera? So the, the eight key pillars of, of strategy and just asks you to, in, in a simple cell, fill in what the overriding goal of that strategy is, what the elements of it are, what's going well, where do you need to make more progress and what is it actually telling you to do? So that's the strategy on a page exercise. And again, it's a really simple tool. Um, I've done this with, I mean, I would go as far as saying I've done it with hundreds of businesses. Um, and generally the exercise takes a couple of hours, whether you, either whether you do it in a, in a facilitated mode or with a group of people, or whether you just sit down on a Sunday morning um, with Desert Island Discs and do it, do it, do it then. Um, so really good kind of, uh, really good way to, to, to get stuff out of your head and onto a page. And the, the critical thing is this last column that what is it telling me to do? What do I actually have to do in order to move my um, strategy forward? So again, I'm just um, describing this for context. Um, and the very final bit is a very simple template, um, sort of extend extension, same kind of principle. Um, which we'll send you. Um, I think we've got some videos on this this template as well, which we can we can let you have access to. Um, but this is a product strategy um, exercise, which in, invites you to think about all the things you are selling. What are your product lines? And sometimes people find that easy to articulate. Um, sometimes people find it difficult to articulate. But taking the time to say. These are actually the things that we are selling, be that a service, be it a, a physical product. Um, this is how mature it is as a product. These are the financials. So what's our average order size? How many are we selling? How many do we want to sell? Um, and this is what it's telling us to do for each one of those product lines in terms of our marketing approach, our sales approach, and our operational approach. And again, just by doing this exercise, in the round on a, on a, on a single page um, in the whole, what it, what it really drives you to do is to start to think about all of these elements contextually. So am I selling things, uh, are the things I'm selling actually the right things for me to be putting my attention on? Am I selling things that are difficult to deliver? Um, am, I, am I selling too many things that aren't making me enough money? Am I selling things that I know are end of life and need replacing? And it just takes you through this journey of, um, uh, I guess, self-realization and ability to articulate um, key actions that are, are very strategic in their nature, but actually also easy to switch into tactical actions. Um, so that was my kind of um, uh, uh, race through a bit of context for this. And, and, and as I said, all of this material is, is at the heart of um, really everything that Firestarter does in terms of leadership and management support for businesses so when 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 we're engaging with businesses for, for for long significant periods in quite a an involved way a lot of this content really supports the work we do but we also do things like simple um uh training programs so this this practical business planning course here is, is one of our absolute staples and a lot lot of these contents so the gripping strategy in three simple steps doing product strategy on a page understanding what team looks like, et cetera, um, are, are at the heart of that. So I just think um, we'll give you some links later to access content around this and we'll send you some of the templates. But there's, there's just some really nice things that you can do on a routine basis that just help um, help just quickly start to bring things into some kind of shape. Um, so that is my introduction to a lot, yeah. Um, the, the, the stuff we're going to do now is just take a little bit further um, conceptually and, and talk about um, the idea of using different planning horizons to, to, to make stuff happen, to get stuff done. And then, as I said, just a few tips around actual actual methods for doing stuff. Um, so, conscious I'm just plowing on, um, if anybody's got any immediate questions uh, or, Johnny, I don't know if anything's peaked up in the chat yet. 
No, no, we're all good so far. Cool. Excellent. So uh, I'll keep going. Um, so this concept of planning horizons, um, I suppose you can connect this quite um, simply to that to the ideas of the strategic intent. The, the idea of the strategic intent document is you say, okay, what does it need to look like in three years? And therefore, what does it need to look like in one year? And therefore, what do I have to do? Um, we first started um, perhaps taking this to a next stage um, during the really early stages of the, um, the coronavirus um, pandemic, when literally the world locked down. Um, and we, uh, and many of you, or some of you may have come on uh, some of the forums that we ran during that period. I think we, we ran something like 25 um, kind of forums for, for, for business owners, business leaders, senior managers, uh, and had sort of probably 200 plus people come to those forums over the course of the, the time we did it. But this was one of the really early topics we covered when everybody was just in this, this almost mode of paralysis in terms of how can I plan, what can I do? Um, and, and, and we started taking people through sort of the concept of setting different planning horizons to help you really get a sort of um, a line of attack for, 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 for your objectives. So um, in this kind of, in this model, so I've, I've updated it for the purposes of this conversation, but really what it suggests you do is you, you pick four or five different horizons. And again, we're just, we're just sort of making recommendations here and examples. You can, you can, you can make it do whatever you want it to do, but um, the five I've picked here are, what do I want to achieve in the next month or so? So by the end of February, um, what do I want to have achieved at the half year? So the end of June, um, what do I want to achieve by Christmas this year when I'm having my mince pies and sherry? What do I want to sit back and reflect on? Um, and, and what do I want to, to achieve by the end of next year, 2024? Uh, and what do I want my legacy to be? So there, there, there are some really quite extreme, um, some extreme planning horizons. Um, commonly, um, and ironically, um, people find the sometimes find the the longer term ones easier to articulate um, than the shorter term ones, uh, and actually the the sort of the messy middle, as I've described it there, um, one of our one of our clients kind of introduced me a guy called Craig Wiltshire introduced me to that expression a couple of years ago. The messy middle is probably the is the true is the truest part. So most most people can have a a reasonable idea as to what they're going to do in the next few days, few weeks. Um, they probably can articulate a slightly bigger picture, but the bit in the middle is often the hard bit to concentrate on. And of course, it's the bit in the middle that, that gets you from the the, uh, the the sort of the crocodiles nearest the canoe to the to the the, the longer term um, execution of what you're trying to achieve. So, step one of this um, of this concept is to just identify four or five different planning horizons. To be honest, I think the ones I've put there are pretty are pretty good. Like there's a near term, a medium term, a longer term, but not too silly. And then actually your legacy. The next thing you need to do is pick. And so this is obviously um, very business focused, um, but these are just recommendations. And, and when I move on to the next slide, you'll, 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 you'll sort of get a, a, a feel for similar um, uh, uh, sort of principles from things like the strategy on a page document and the, the product strategy on a page document. Um, but you've picked your horizons. Now what you need to do is to pick the things that you want to have a, a, a view on. Yeah, You want to plan around. So as I say, this is a very uh, business-centered model. So what, what do I want the financial health of my business to look like at various different points? And that could be um, the profitability of your business, profit and loss, or it could be your, your cash situation. Um, what do I want my product strategy to look like and my product execution? What do I want my team to look like? Um, what do I want my, my leadership team, my management team to look like? What, what do I want my, my digital footprint to look like? Or um, I think um, lots of businesses are still struggling with 
Um, how do I manage hybrid versus in-person? What do I want my virtual strategy to be for my business? And what do I want it all to be about for me? So pick these. So I've picked seven here. You can pick your own seven. And then you're straight into an exercise of combining these two elements, the time scale and the things you're planning around. Um, and really similar kind of principle, similar template to both the strategy on a page and the um, and the um, product strategy on a page. For each of the dimensions and for each of the timescales, you just need to fill in the boxes, yeah? Write stuff in here, as it says there. So again, we've got a template. You can, you can change the elements down the side, uh, but I, I think these are pretty good, especially things like the me, yeah? Um, but if you look at if you look at each one of these and just take it all the way through the journey, it really helps you um, as a business owner, business leader, senior manager to start to draw a picture of what you're trying to do. And again, the same principle of what are the critical next actions that I need to do to move this on. Clearly, um, as you move through each um, column, um, you'll, you'll get closer to the next one. So nice exercise. And just kind of keep it simple, yeah? Um, generally speaking, you, your first view on what is going to happen is probably going to be is probably going to be right. So don't overthink this. So get get your elements correct and then just fill in the boxes. Just start writing. Don't 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 over engineer it. Don't complicate it. Just write, just write what you think, yeah? Um, and it will come to you. Commonly what happens with these type of exercises is that um, you uh, you write something in one box, then start writing something in the next box. And it, it makes you reflect on what you've just written in the previous box. So you kind of, you find yourself looping around, which is why it kind of takes often a couple of hours to get to something that you look at and you go, wow, I feel like I've got a really decent, I've got a really decent sense now. But um, my, my my experience of this exercise, all these type of exercises, that are just really useful for bringing some sense um, into your world. Um, so um, the next kind of piece, which just um, takes us into a bit of thinking around um, uh, kind of uh, what to do next with this, is making sure that you kind of, um, uh, I guess, don't 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 get too complicated with the way that you bring it together, but also embed some good methods for making sure that you're keeping yourself honest and and actually executing it. So, um, the kind of one of the principles around um, these type of exercises, especially the planning horizon exercise, is that all you're trying to do is to get to the next place. Yeah. So I, I'm I'm getting to the end. I, I've I've written my long term view as far as my legacy for each one of these but actually what I really want to do is get to a place where I'm concentrating on delivering what's going to get me to the next milestone um, and um, again going back to um, sort of the the connection of this to everything that we're talking about the, the last the last element of a lot of our of our programs talk about this concept of um, rhythm and rigor um, and as it says in that, that sort of middle yellow box, the classic issue in businesses is that even if they nail their strategy documents, they fail to make the time or stick to the discipline of pushing the strategy through. So the day job, the day job gets in the way. So there's all the classic kind of too busy doing it wrong to do it right, or um, kind of too busy felling trees to sharpen my ax. It's that it's, it's those kind of um, sort of cliches, but the, I think a lot of a lot of what we um, talk to people about, and that I guess the content we've covered so far, is is there to simplify and facilitate the process of getting to clarity on simple strategy quickly, um, and understanding what your your horizons are. The next stage is to do stuff that actually makes sure that you create the the um, framework to execute what you need to execute. So. Um, what I'm going to do um, uh, for the next sort of five, um, five, ten minutes or so is I'm just going to bounce through a few little ideas, um, just some tips. And, and, and generally when I've done this before, what happens is when we get into the conversation afterwards, 
people also offer up things that they find work for them. So um, there's no bad ideas with this kind of stuff, but the, there's, there's lots of little um, concepts which seem to work for people. So um, I'm just going to bounce through these. So the first, the first one is kind of obviously with all of this execution, um, little and often is generally more effective than trying to say, well, what I'm going to do is I'm in, in March, I'm going to have a really good go at strategy. Um, and it, it, it's, it's, it's always a source of amusement to me that people will tell you that they're really busy at the moment. Um, and in a few weeks, they're not going to be really busy. That's, that's always a source of amusement. I, I, I've been like uh, working properly, I guess, for the best part of 30 years. I've been busy the whole time. Yeah, it doesn't ever get any easier. So I think you have to, you, you, it, it, it's a myth that things, that you're not going to be busy in two weeks or three weeks or eight weeks and not occupied and not doing a day job. So you have to kind of, you have to create methods um, where little and often um, you're, you're, you're tackling the big rocks that are going to um, make you for, uh, move you forward. Um, I'm a big fan of Stephen Covey. If, if people um, have and haven't read the um, Stephen Covey Seven Habits of Effective or Highly Effective People book. Um, I mean, the principles in there have, have done me done me solid for, for probably the last 20 years. But one of them is the, the put first things first principle. Um, so literally, the, the principle is um, what, what are the things that are going to really make a difference in your business and make the time to do those things first. So if that means like, at seven o'clock in the morning, you spend two hours doing the thing that's going to make a material difference to your business because um, uh, before the day gets away from you, it's worth that investment of time. Um, or if that means you start to push stuff away in your diary um, so that you always get the first three hours of a Thursday to yourself, and that's your first thing's first time. Um, really, really powerful principle. Um, and um, I certainly do that kind of stuff. Um, people that have access to my diary will often see FTF written in it and, and time time blocked because you have to make the time to do the things that are going to make a difference to your business. Um, build an operating calendar um, for your business. So a calendar that actually articulates when you're going to do the things that are going to move your business forward. I'll, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about this. I've got a template I'm going to show you um, in a minute around this. Um, simple stuff. So th this whole concept of planning horizons um, and identification of critical actions is a really close cousin of just breaking big plans down into annual, quarterly, monthly and weekly routines. So specifically growth plans. So this year we want to do two million pounds or 15 million pounds or 400,000 pounds or 50,000 pounds, break it down and set yourself milestones that um, are really, um, you, you can focus on the, focus on the milestone. It, it, it's like sport. You, you play the first half, then you play the second half. Like it, it, it's, it's, it's things like that. Um, structure established routines. So um, my next slide talks specifically about the concept of rhythm and rigor. Um, but the rigor bit of rhythm and rigor is is the principle that says um, when I when I do this thing, so when I review my plan or when I review my sales or when I review my accounts receivables, I don't have to think too hard about it because I have a method. Um, and by doing that, it makes it a much more um, deliverable habit um, rather than kind of reinventing the wheel every time as to what you're you're doing. Um, and everything that you do, and we'll, we'll, we'll tackle this a little bit um, when I look at the operating calendar principle, e everything you do in terms of like established routines, rhythm, rigor, should have a purpose. So kind of the first, the first Monday of every uh, month, we have a proper sales forecasting review. The third Tuesday of every second month of every quarter, we have a proper strategic review of how we're progressing against our plan. Every Friday morning, we look at our accounts receivables and check their 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 um, on track. Just little things like that. Just like cre actually, ironically, create space in your world, not fill it up, because they 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 give a rhythm to the key things that you need to execute um, in your business. Um, the similar concept here is just making sure that 
when you do this kind of stuff, you're being really functional. So you're actually doing the work in the sessions, not just talking about doing the work. So don't have a don't have a management meeting where you talk about all the big strategy things you need to think about doing. You're better off spending an hour and a half talking about the thing yeah, and actually crystallizing something. I'm a massive believer that that most most things can be can can be got to some kind of significant clarity in 30 minutes, 60 minutes, 90 minutes. It, it, it's more about programming the time to have the conversation um, than, than having a chat about all the things you haven't done yet. Um, really, again, real close um, uh, uh, cousin to that is um, using commitment to others as a, as a means to ensure that stuff gets done. I'll, I'll give you a really tangible example of this. Um, at Firestarter, we have an advisory board of external people uh, and we have a, a, a an advisory board meeting every three months um the next one's tomorrow morning um and what that means is the the kind of senior managers of our business ha have an accountability point yeah an external accountability point where we have to sing for our supper about the things that we've said we were going to do in the last three months so having that kind of accountability and it can be it can be anybody it could be your daughter yeah it could be your friend it could be somebody internal it could be somebody external it, it really helps you 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 make sure that you're doing the stuff because you have a you have a reason um to do it um use simple kpi tracking i'll talk a little bit about this so key performance indicators um uh, and tracking trend trends are more important understand the trends are things going up are things going down are you making progress um and then just use of really simple templates everything i've talked about today i hope um points to simplicity rather than over complicating things um don't make it complicated just use simple templates and and um, get on with the work um and everything that you're doing um, ask yourself, like, what is it telling me to do? If you reflect on um, the strategy on the page tool, if you reflect on the product strategy on the page tool, if you um, reflect on the planning horizons tool, what they're asking you to do is to say, okay, what have I got to do to move this forward? What is the one action, the two actions I have to do now to move this forward? And then I'm all, all I'm going to do is worry about doing that. Um, and once I've done that, I'll think about what the next thing to do is. Um, simple. Um, and then kind of finally, really, a um, couple of points, just um, I'm involved in all kinds of things. Um, I go to meetings where uh, people four weeks later will send out the minutes of the meeting, uh, by which time everybody's forgotten about it. And, and the whole job of writing the minutes is kind of like a, a, a burden, some kind of exercise that nobody wants to do and nobody has let let's 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 get away from that we're interested in the next actions that that's all all the meeting should conclude yeah what are the next actions and actually try and do that work in the meeting in the conversation so do as much as you can in the session most of the work we do um both internally and externally uh the actions are written up as we go uh, on an email hit send they're gone yeah so don't don't do the work twice yeah um because generally most people haven't got time to do the work twice it, it's it's inefficient um so those are just some concepts i i said i'll just give a little bit more color um on the rhythm and rigor piece um uh so just by absolute definition sort of rhythm is this concept of doing things on a regular basis so you program the things that you know will make a difference to your business rigor is the concept of having a method that you that you you have for each time you do it so you're not constantly so so classic example is things like forecasting or pipeline management or accounts receivables conversations when we do those conversations we do them in this way it just means everybody who comes to that conversation uh, knows how it goes um the conversation take 10 minutes 15 minutes rather than two and a half hours uh and you can get on with creating the space in your diary three simple templates um this one we'll, we'll send this but this is a a classic example of a, a rhythm and rigor um uh, uh uh calendar where what you do for the year is you you plan the thing so um i'm sure people's eyesight aren't quite good enough to read all of this but the key down the bottom uh like picks out some standard things so like monthly management meeting we have on the 
whatever, third Tuesday of every month. Weekly forecasting, we do nine o'clock every Monday morning. Quarterly forecasting, we do the first Tuesday of every quarter. Training workshops, we do on the fourth Wednesday of every month, et cetera, et cetera. And it just creates the, 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 the rhythm of the business that really helps you uh, move stuff forward. And I, and I always make the point with this that, Actually, it's about creating white space. It's not about filling your, your calendar with meetings. It's about creating the space to do other stuff. So that's the, the, the central piece around that. Really simple KPI tools. So again, this is just simple spreadsheets, but pick four or five things to track. So kind of how many meetings are we going to or um, how many of widget A have we sold and just track it weekly for five, six weeks. Starts to get you into a really good method of, of understanding how your trends are developing um, and, and by staring at it what it makes you do is to um, uh, ask yourself what is it telling me to do so we've said that for um, uh, widget a we want to sell um, 26 a week week one we sold four week two we sold two week three we sold 20 week four we sold 25 what's going on yeah is it good is it bad where do we need to put our efforts what do we need to adjust it really brings it to life in your face um, really quickly um, and then the other one is just this template um, and again we can give you access to to all of these um, if, if you want them um, just real simple review um, methods um, uh, often when you when you put initiatives into a business, so kind of um, uh, introduction of a new software or whatever, um, this, this template tends to stand the kind of test for pretty well every initiative that you want to do. Um, and by giving ownership of an initiative to someone and on a monthly basis, asking them to report in this format to you really tends to move it forwards. And so you can see kind of, What's the purpose of the initiative? So the purpose of the initiative is to introduce a new software which is going to revolutionize the whole world for us. Uh, what are the key metrics? The key metrics are that um, uh, this is going to be fully installed by the end of June. Uh, we're going to have trained everybody by the end of September, whatever those measurables are. And then just what did you do in the last month? So in the last month, actually, we bought the software. We uh, organized the training. What are you going to do in the next month? In the next month, we're going to um, uh, get the, the detailed configuration done and identify 20 super users. What just made all of that up? But the point is simple project um, reporting uh, and accountability really helps move, uh, really helps move for, uh, things forward in your business. And actually um, uh, uh, an internal conversation where um, three or four people are presenting their updates on projects to you um, really drives um, strategy and action forward. So this is the list that um, I presented previously. Uh, think little and often, put things first things first, have an operating calendar, uh, break things into annual, quarterly, monthly and weekly, get routines in, understand why you're doing each routine, do the work in the routine, uh, in the meeting rather, uh, commit, have accountability buddies, internal and external, track the trends, um, always ask, what is this telling me to do? What is this telling me to do next? And concentrate on just identifying those actions and then getting on with the work. Um, so that, um, in a whirlwind 40 minutes, um, <laughs> is um, a, a summary of a whole load of stuff. Um, what you've got on the screen here is just some, um, I guess, some stuff that you can do next. If you've got any specific questions i mean contact us directly um use the info at address um that qr code there will just take you to i think it takes you to the um, the practical business um uh parts of our website um clearly john um is our man on the ground um and around and about and we're really well connected to damon um we're doing these kind of sessions on a pretty regular basis we're we're pretty, um, um, I don't know what the word is, kind of un, un, un precious. that's not a word, it is now, um, about sharing this information because we think it, it, it's just generally really um, helpful for everybody uh, and always there, um, always there to, to, to answer questions as and when. So that um, is it. Um, so Damon, there you go. Um, <laughs> 
hopefully helpful. I'm happy for to answer, talk about any any questions that um, uh, specifically Julie, Richard, um, and yourself and and uh, Ronna might have actually. So there we go. Stunned silence. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. I think um, I think there was a lot in there, but the key thing is what stood out to you as you look at that. Because there's, the great thing about these presentations, there's always something that people can walk away and implement day one, isn't there? Take Most away people and, take one or two things away. Exactly, yeah. There's there's always something that stands out. You can actually go ahead and do something. And uh, I'm just going to add a thought there. When you're talking about the meetings and a lot of talk done, but what's the next step? I thought about the adage of, after all is said and done, there's always more said than done. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and But that's also relevant to what we do now is that it's great to listen, hear about it, even talk about it after the event, but it's the doing comes the real progress, doesn't it? And the learning is developed because we actually implement as well. So that, that's important. Whatever you take away, then take and do is, is, is another kind of guideline of, that it really helps make a difference. So, so yeah, any other thoughts that you've got or questions? Damon, yeah, Damon, out, there, yeah. Damon, yeah. Just to say thanks, and uh, obviously I think some of this is getting through to me now. I've sat through a, a few of these, so uh, um, but uh, I think even just the the really simple things that you've, you've you've sort of outlined there, and some of those templates, you know, just get yourself started with the you know something you could do over a coffee break, and then a couple of hours, you know, that that will really kind of mobilise you, I think, uh, and and really sort of get, I think. Not doing it is the worst thing you can do. Not doing anything, you know. If you, yeah. Once you start the ball rolling, I think it gives you that uh, kind of, it, it, you know, passion and incentive to, to to carry on. And I think those templates and those frameworks are a fantastic tool just to help formulate your, you know, a really clear way forward. Rather than, I think, having been involved in more strategic sessions than I care to remember, it, it's overwhelming. So, you know, you get people, you know, suggesting, you know, it gets clouded. So if you have a framework for it like those, I think it gives a really, I think you guys keep it really simple and achievable. So I would just recommend people take those, uh, you know, use those templates and and, and and go with them. Yeah, a couple, couple of points to support that. Firstly, I completely agree. Um, sort of a lot of big strategy and planning processes are so exhausting, yeah? By the time you get to the end of it, you, you, you're knackered, yeah, and you kind of the, the actual thought of doing it is 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 kind of an anathema to you, which is why plans get put in desks and never looked at again. Um, the the other point, totally to support what you said, um, and certainly something I I do when I'm I'm not when I'm struggling to get down to doing something. Sometimes if you just like set a timer for two hours. Yeah, and say, well, I'm going to go and lock myself in a room, set a timer for two hours, and I'm going to just start. I'm just going to fill in the first box and see what happens. Yeah. And then I'll fill in the next box. And then before you know it, you get in a flow. Yeah. Um, it's, it's an, and, and then the time runs out and you go, oh, I'm going to keep going. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's really, it's a really interesting, weird psychology. Yeah. Um, That's what my wife keeps telling me to do about clearing the house up. <laughs> I have to say, I've done it in the house. I was, I'm yeah. going to go and do an hour in the garage now. Yeah, that's yeah. right. She, yeah. She's always talking to me about what she's doing for the next 20 minutes. Yeah. And it always goes beyond that because you, I mean, I was just, I, I think this has been very illuminating because it's pointed out to me a couple of the things I really haven't really thought about when I've been thinking about planning. And actually, it's the first thing is uh, the, the idea of the strategic intent. I haven't really bothered to do that. Yeah, let things just go in with the flow, you know, and it's not productive. It's not got any direction, and it's really, I really need to do something about that. It it really helps as well. Uh, just bring sounds very cheesy, uh, sort of bring peace to your day to day life as well. Oh, because yeah. if you if you know if you know that what you're because you can then judge everything you do actually pretty well. Is this helping? Is this helping me get closer to my strategic intent or not yeah uh damon you're very yeah, just 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 another one uh actually uh, just because we've got julie on as well from uh, uh who, who, who will be working with a you know a team of people and having this structure 
and the the team you know sh sharing these with the team you know help really helps focus and really helps mobilize the team and get them you know give them ownership and you know helping you achieve your your objectives mm. oh hi julie you on mute julie i think so there we go uh, there thank you very much um, I just, uh, I think it's great. Presumably, uh, the good idea is to share this process of working with things like managers. Completely. So that you're all working. Uh, I, I, I suppose I'm chair of a board and then have operational in um, working with the team at the mill. But how do we kind of, and <laughs> we did a business plan, we all got together, decided the objectives and what we're going for. But I, I find it sometimes hard to keep everybody on track who's on the board because then they start saying, oh, some are from the past, so we did it this way, should we change this? And, and, and I'm struggling a little bit to keep us united. And I wonder if you've got any tips on that with, with regards to this plan. Um, so the thing I, I, I skipped over a bit because of time, um, in, that, in that initial... Um, uh, sort of strategy on a page type exercise yeah. um so if you're working with a bigger team and a bigger management team yeah. absolutely doing that exercise as a team is a really right. powerful okay. really powerful right. thing to do and it's almost the um the uh action of doing that exercise as a team brings yeah. some unity because if you if you start off with a, a, a guiding principle that we as a team have to get to a single one-page document that we yeah. all will like sign in blood yeah yeah, um, yeah. okay then so you've got the, a commitment the, the mind the mindset gets you there um the yeah. thing i um and, and there's tactics actually to the way that you do it that the best thing to do with that strategy on a page doc is to do the first column first which is the what what is the overriding goal of my financial strategy and my products like do that for each one of the strategic pillars and then work your way across so right. that, okay. that's, that that's the way to do the exercise the last column is the um what are the critical actions that we need to take in the next um year column what ten happen if once you've done the exercise if you look there, there are eight strategic pillars. Um, typically what happens is when you look at the last column, what are the critical actions that we need to do in the next year? You, there, there are some, there's some repetition, yeah, because things cut across different strategic yeah. pillars and you normally end up with four or five like really big actions. We must recruit a team that looks like this or we must change our core system. And then you give ownership of each one of those and we, we call those in our like it's not it's not our term, but uh, in our it, it's a well used term. We we call those the vital few. So you end up with four or five vital few initiatives um, that, and and then you give ownership of each one of those to a person, yeah. and then you're off. Yeah. Then you're off, basically. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, and can I just say, presuming you keep reviewing this, and if you know things like COVID happen, so yeah. you had to totally you go back to your plan and say is it still relevant correct not, yeah. yeah okay so yeah. you have to keep adjusting it yeah, yeah and I, I think the um the sort of my experience of doing it is you do the, the strategy on a page exercise you identify your vital few you um give ownership of the vital few to key people you have probably a monthly vital few review where yeah. each, each person has to come and sing for their supper on what they're doing. Um, in my experience, um, you gen that you generally do that for about six months, yeah? By which right. point, most of the stuff you've said you were going to do, you've done, yeah? Right, okay. Um, and then you, like, give yourself a bit of a breather and then you go again, yeah? I mean, yeah. that okay. seems, seems, to, seems to work, yeah? Yeah, yeah. okay. So that after six months, it, it may be that something you've got on the list isn't isn't happening, and you have to ask why or is yeah, it yeah. Still relevant. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And and the, as you say, things things macro things happen, don't they? Like pandemics and wars <laughs> yeah. and all those <laughs> energy bills, things. energy bills. You name it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 
Okay, thank you very much. It's very useful. Brilliant. And, and Julie, on that, I mean, like Chris is saying, I'm local here. So once yeah. you get the template through and you're saying, all right, what did Chris say again about this? <laughs> then I'm available. I'm local. Come, come and have a chat with you and give you a bit more steer on it and to help well, it make it. Thank you very much. Facilitation helps. Facilitation helps, actually, yeah. with these exercises. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that would be lovely. Thank you. Excellent. Any other points, questions? Thanks. Excellent. Well, thank you for uh, your engagement and um, um, interest. Um, we're very happy to help. Damon, always a pleasure. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, keep, keep in contact. If there's, if there's anything we can piggyback on, you mentioned future sessions. The, the beauty yeah, of the come along. is we can share it through through our own yeah, uh, kind of resources. Yeah. So that'd be fantastic. But th th and, and what so we'll much. do. What we'll do is we'll um, uh, we'll get some follow up structured for this. We'll get like we'll get templates and things put together and um, sent across to people. And and obviously uh, we've recorded it um, so that can be shared as well for the people that couldn't make it. And and off we go. Fantastic. Okay. Well, th Brilliant. thank you so much again, guys, for uh, helping facilitate this. Our pleasure. And uh, have uh, have great days, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Thank you. everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.